Thank you, sir. Can we please settle down? Let's settle down. Let's settle down. Who can remind us what we studied last week? Who can remind us what we studied last week? Anybody? Who can remind us what we studied last week? Are we all here this morning? Eh? Are we sure we are here? Physically, spiritually? Eh? <laughs> I will wear that. I will wear that after. I will wear that after. <laughs> Marriage status. So what did we study? What 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 did we talk about marriage status last week? Anybody? What did we talk about marriage status last week? Hey, thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. The Lord want us to a living marriage. Is it general? Hello? Oh, okay. So today, our lesson for this morning is lesson 45. Lesson 45, love language in marriage. Love language in marriage. And our memory verse is in the same uh, page, Proverbs 25, 15. By long forbearing is a prince persuaded. And a soft tongue break the bone. Can we all read that together, please? Is a prince persuaded, and a soft tongue break the bone. Can we read that once again? The question is who is a prince? Are you a prince? Hello? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes. How many princes do we have here today? And how many princes do we have here today? There are many. Okay, yeah, thank you. And what does it exactly mean to forbear with someone? Anybody? To tolerate, okay? Endure, yeah. To be patient. Yeah, that's good. And our Bible passage for this morning is uh, in the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 to 25. Can somebody please, uh, we need a fast reader to read this for us. Genesis 2, 18 to 25. Please, we need a fast reader to read that for us. Genesis 2, 18 to 25. Make him an ape meat, and out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, and every fowl of the hair, and brought them unto Adam, to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called them, every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam God gave name to all cattle, and to the fowl of the hair, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an ape meat for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the ribs which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife and we're not ashamed. Thank you, sir. The Lord bless the reading in the name of Jesus. 
Bible, Bible passage tell us the main reason why God created a woman was because God saw that it is not good for a man to be alone. That was the main reason. The main objective is because man is not supposed to be alone. Yeah, please, uh, Yaya, uh, uh, the class is upstairs. Anybody within age 18 to 35, please, can you please go upstairs for your own lesson? Please. So the main reason why God created a woman was because God saw that it is not good for a man to be alone. You see, at the beginning, according to the Bible passage we read this morning, God created different kind of animals, different kind of creatures. Every one of them, different species. But man just exists on his own because he was just an image of God. And God said, that, oh, it is not good for this fellow to just remain alone. He needs a companion. Many marriages are needless failing because the marriage partner have a lacking of knowledge regarding dynamics of good relationship. And that's seen in the book of Oshia 4.6, where it says, my people perish because of what? Because of lack of knowledge. Ask me, how do I know? I know about this, because once in a while, when couple do argue, once in a while, when I see the children, when they argue, when they are when they are arguing about something, and when I look back, sometimes I laugh. But those things that I laugh at, they are serious issue within them. They are something that is paramount in their heart. So, which means we see things differently. Even God himself says, your ways are not what? They are not my ways. As heaven is far above the heart, so far is my way higher than your way. So God has a different way of seeing things. Once in a while, when we see other people, when they quarrel, you begin to wonder, why is it that these people, is, is it not something that you can easily set you and go your way? You remember how things work out back home, especially when you are driving. In those days, somebody hit your car, you just see two adults, they remove their clothes, and they are fighting on the road. I'm serious. It's not, it's not funny. But that's the reality. They still do it. <laughs> but over here, when you, when, when you, when you hit each other, you, you, uh, you, 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 I mean, in a gentleman way, you exchange your, your, ins you exchange your insurance. In a gentle manner. I remember the first experience I had like that. There was one time I was heading to work. That was several years back. I had an accident. My car just would veer off the road and hit somebody's garden. The car tumbled. People helped me out. While I was trying to, I was trying to compose myself because I saw the fuel leaking coming out of the uh, car. I was just trying to compose myself. The wife was, cons the, the husband, uh, the, the husband, okay, the wife of the person that has the property, the wife went inside to get me a cup of tea, <laughs> just for me to settle down. But here is the contrast situation to this scenario. Why the wife was busy trying to prepare a cup of tea for me, the husband was busy taking down my car plate number, trying to see how I can, uh, res I mean, get the damage. Uh, it's just a wooden property. I mean, this good, you know, this wooden, uh, this thing, barrier in the... Uh -huh. The husband was more concerned about me getting uh, uh, those things uh, re uh, replaced or whatever. He was already taking my details, taking... I said, look, just hold your peace, gentleman. <laughs> it's not that deep. <laughs> but <laughs> what am I trying to say? It's a different perspective when you look at things. We all have different ways of view things. Those things to that man, 
it's all about his garden. But to me, it's about life. It's about my safety. And the same thing happened in marriage. Once in a while, when you see husband and wife, when you see them behaving funny, you begin to ask yourself, why are these people behaving funny? But the truth is, you have to be there yourself to understand why they behave funny. But the word of God is telling us this morning that my people perish because of what? Because of lack of knowledge. So a lot of time we do some things because we do what? We lack knowledge. Because we don't understand the implication of what we are doing. Those things doesn't, those, those situations doesn't present itself real to us. Look at this, this way. That if for every reason that we quarrel with ourselves, there is an instant judgment. We walk away from it. Like in the days of Moses, when you commit sin, the judgment is there. We walk away from it. But the word of God is saying that we perish, we do things wrongly because of what? Because we lack the knowledge. May the Lord help us as we continue in today in the, in the name of Jesus. So what are those uh, scriptural principles guiding marriage? Married couples should understand that the image of God is, the, is best expressed in combination of male and female. And that's seen in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. Because you and I, we are created in the image of God. Remember, we are not God, but we are just an image. Imagine me projecting or beaming a light to someone here. And what do you see on the wall? What you see is the image, the shape, the appearance of what God is, the personality of God. That is what you see on the wall. So God expects the best from us. God expects the best possible expression of his image in terms of our, the way we relate with each other from us. The God design difference between male and female is to be accepted as complementary, not competitive. Please, can somebody open our Bible to the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 18? Genesis 2:18. Thank you, ma. Look at it this way. Has anyone been alone here before? Anybody? Don't feel shy. You've been alone. How does it feel to be alone? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, whether scientifically proven or by social science, a lot of there is a lot of uh, video clips going out there on WhatsApp that one of the uh, things that can easily kill someone is loneliness. You can be you can be in the midst of people and be lonely simply because you have nobody to identify with, you have nobody to share your feeling with, you have nobody to express yourself to relate with. And marriage is divine and not human institution. We can see that in the book of Genesis chapter 2, 21 to 28. It is expected to be a relationship or companion, completion and communion. So, relationship in different form. Somebody that you can call your companion. If there is a need for you to go out or do something, you have somebody that you can call on. There, please, can we go out? Somebody that can be your completion, that can make up for your own shortcoming. Somebody that you can come in with. Marriage was designed by God to be permanent, mutual convention, covenant relationship. God's intent is for marriage to be an inestimable source of joy and fulfillment. In fact, marriage is the major part of God's plan to bring re redemption to humanity. The seed of the marriage relationship provided the vehicle for incarnation of the Savior, Jesus Christ, and that's seen in the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 3, verse 15. I I'm trying to rush you because of our time. Now, here is the main point of our lesson today. 
understanding the uh, love language. Don't be shy in this particular subsection. I'm, because I'm going to go around and I'm going to ask each and every one of you, what is your love language in marriage? I can see somebody shaking her head. I'm not going to mention name. <laughs> Anybody? Why are you all feeling shy? Eh? In the beginning, you said you can turn mountain to. <laughs> you said you can perform several miracles. Why are you feeling shy? <laughs> eh? With me? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> okay. For <laughs> you are shy. <laughs> okay. For some people. Their own understanding of love language is they need somebody to tell them something sweet. Oh, there, you look beautiful. You look gorgeous. You are handsome. I, I can feel, I can, you have a nice aroma. You know, some, some, some people like sweet words. Some, some, some like when, when you are in the kitchen, you are there with them, even though you could be dipping your heart into picking some meat or fried or whatever, walking in and, you know, different people. Some like that when they are going now, you go out and do shopping together, you know, you are pushing trolley and, you know, that kind of thing. So what exactly is your own language, Brother John? I start with you. <laughs> no, we start with you. Physical touching. My sister, is that true, yes or no? Don't look at him. Oh. <laughs> is that true? Okay. Who else? Anybody? Quality time. Is that true, sir? <laughs> Any other person? Eh? One to five. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? <laughs> My brother. <laughs> you. <laughs> yes, sir. Number five. Why, is, why does everybody like touching, touching, touching? <laughs> huh? <laughs> I don't tell you my own, huh? <laughs> Bro, Lucas, over to you. <laughs> Sir, acts of service. <laughs> okay. May the Lord help us, our sister. <laughs> Many problems in marriage usually occur due to inability of the partner to understand each other's love language. Love language is an expression that makes you or your partner feel love. There are five primary love languages. They are quality time. Spending time with each other and talking without interruption, going about, going out and about, having fun together, celebrating birthdays, wedding and anniversary, etc. Let courtship continue even after marriage. And that's seen in the book of Genesis 26, verse 8. Please, can somebody open our Bible to the book of Genesis 26, verse 8? Genesis 6, 26, verse 8. Amen. That was Isaac. Doing what? Petting with Rebecca. So why is it that as children of God, we do feel shy or we feel, uh, oh, Maybe my brother is looking at me, or maybe they feel my, my own is too much. Once in a while, we need to, we need to express ourselves. Or maybe, maybe I, I, I understand 
Sir? Hello, sir. Pastor, sir. I understand you are, you are, you are presenting certificate to people that, uh, that did their this thing uh, yesterday. Maybe there should be a separate certificate for somebody, the best couple. Maybe people... Yeah, maybe there should be a kind of certificate for people like that this morning as well. <laughs> okay, sir. Then the second one is an act of service. Do things your spouse, do things you know your spouse will like you to do. For example, cooking meals, helping each other, especially in household chores. And that's seen in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Verse 9 to 12. So, sir, what does she like you to always do? Sir? <laughs> I like that. Bro, Jerry, over to you. It's your turn. <laughs> you can't escape this. <laughs> Word of affirmation. Okay, good. Sir? Hello, sir. Yes. Bro, yes. <laughs> yeah, what's your <laughs> what's your own love language? <laughs> uh, no, we know we know <laughs> we know you have to pray. Act of service. Which act of service? Changing the tire. <laughs> Cooking for her. Which one, sir? <laughs> no, no, no. There, there must be some other one. <laughs> Apart from cooking. <laughs> you are feeling shy, sir. <laughs> That's good. That's good. We bless, we bless God for that. <laughs> another expression, another, another understanding or expression of long language is uh, exchange of gift. Express your love for each other through gi uh, giving or receiving of gift, no matter how small. How often do we give to, give to our spouse? Always. When last did you give gift to him? No, no, no. I'm not talking of one coming. When last? That happened once in a year. I'm talking of gift. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. If we've not been doing it, we need to step up the game. Exchanging of gift. Another expression is a word of affirmation. Couple must be consistent in saying, I love you. I am sorry. Thank you. You look nice in the dress. Exit area. Okay, can we please open our Bible to the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 15. Song of Solomon, 1, 15. Song of Solomon, 1, 15. Behold, thou art fair. One behold, thou art fair. My love, behold, thou art fair. Thou art dove's highs. Amen. <laughs> so, you know, when you when you when you say sweet thing to somebody to your to your spouse, your spouse is reassured. Your spouse feels confident that look, I am the son of the soil in this one. <laughs> I'm the main person. <laughs> I'm the real deal. <laughs> Thank you, ma. <laughs> 
Then also, like some of us have uh, spoken this morning, physical touching. There is a way of communicating emotional love, e.g. holding hands, kissing, pecking, embracing, parting, parking, necking, sitting close to each other. You know, there are different ways. Sitting close to each other. <laughs> eh? <laughs> Which one is? <laughs> I should ask you that because you are more <laughs> you are more experienced in this game. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Sitting close to, to each other, <laughs> and that's also seen in the book of Genesis, chapter twenty-six, verse eight, where we learn about uh, Isaac. There are different versions of the Bible. A version of the, the Amplified Version says Isaac was caressing uh, Rebekah. And also in the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 2, that the eyes like the eyes of a dove. So which means a dove has a beautiful eyes. You know, when I was reading that, I said, wow, so a dove has a beautiful eyes. <laughs> May the Lord help us as we digest today's lesson in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm going to ask, let's be honest about this. What is your love, expression of your love language to your spouse? If you don't know it, go and find out. We are all work in progress. And if you do know it, you have been skipping it due to one thing or the other. You need to go and step up your game. May the Lord bless the teaching in the mighty name of Jesus.